Hi there, I'm Dr. Faye Schumann. I get to talk to you today about oils 102, and they're typically known for oils um, that will help with the cold and flu season. Uh, oils 101 is going to be your typical um, essential oil starter kit that we usually go over in a separate video. So today I'm going to uh, present to you my PowerPoint on how to use certain oils to help with cold and flu season or the winter season. So I'm going to click over to um, the start of the PowerPoint here. Uh, my disclaimer is that even though I am a doctor, um, I do not want to be going against any of your doctor's wishes on claiming to cure, diagnose, or treat anything that you are dealing with personally um, that I present that the oils can help with in this presentation. Um, it's just my intention of this PowerPoint to educate you that you can make your own educated decisions on how to use these essential oils. So uh, I've been practicing for eight years and I have two wonderful little boys, Noah and Isaac, and a lovely husband, Eric. And um, natural health has just been a part of our family's life, um, even way back to when my father um, had stage 4 cancer and he chose natural ways to heal himself and he did it through alternative me methods. Um, but that's another presentation and it's very exciting news. So we have been using oils probably since I was a teenager. And we love um, my sisters, my family. The oils to us are very important and they work really well for a lot of the things that we use. Uh, for just day-to-day -day health. So at the clinic that I work at, uh, we teach on four pillars of health. And the first one is on cellular healing um, through diet. And that's uh, very cutting edge uh, science and research and technology and you name it, on ways to uh, choose better ways of eating. And it typically comes down to eating no grains and no sugar. Then we educate on nutritional deficiencies, you know, making sure you have enough vitamin D, all your B vitamins, your iron, all that. And of course, being a chiropractor, we just we find so much health benefit by getting your body corrected and in alignment um, and just getting the nervous system communicating like it should. And then we have the toxins, and that is where the essential oil shines. And so that's where we're going to focus the rest of this talk on, on how the essential oils are used to decrease toxic burden and um, to replace a lot of toxic medicines or over-the-counter medicines that you might be using on a regular basis. So I'm going to start off with um, the nightmare bug problem. Um, some of you might be have, um, hearing more and more about superbugs and that they really are a threat. We have the CDC admitting that the antimicrobial resistance is one of our most serious health threats. And 2 million people get sick each year from antibiotic resistant bacteria. 23,000 people die each year from antibiotic resistant bacteria. And 80% of antibiotics sold in the U.S. go specifically to meat production to promote animal growth. That's a pretty big deal there. So we really make sure that we personally as a family buy antibiotic-free um, meat, preferably grass-fed if we can find it, and organic. And then again, 50% of antibiotics should not be prescribed, and it's costing us in excess of $20 billion in medical costs and $30 billion lost in activity. I would encourage you to go on to YouTube and just search out Superbug bacteria, um, resistance, you know, you'll come across all sorts of new segments on the increasing issue that we are experiencing that the antibiotics are not working and we're getting these uh, super bug issues. So I'm excited to report that the essential oils actually could be beneficial towards helping with some um, resistance and I'll show you some research that I've done personally. So. What is all the hype of these essential oils? What's the big deal? Why is it becoming more and more popular? Um, I guess you could say um, 
people are wising up to better ways to take care of themselves. Um, I guess I would have to say social media and the internet have allowed us to educate ourselves and the essential oils have become very popular as a way to um, get better health through natural ways and it's an easy way to get these oils into our system and a lot of people report profound effects. So with um, the Young Living Essential Oils, that is the company that I have chosen to use for my family. In fact, we've been using them for over, well, well 20 years. They've been around for 20 years. I remember my dad having the first um, essential kit as a teenager, and we would use that when we um, had health concerns arise. And so why we've chosen Young Living is they have um, very high standards to how they get their oils. Um, the first one is that they have the seeds that they choose. Uh, they plant it. They have seven different farms and they're including more uh, because of such the demand to get these oils out to the public. They distill their own, meaning that they use safe procedures um, using stainless steel versus aluminum. And then they test and they're very, very um, strict about their testing. If they don't meet the standards, they will not bottle or seal the distilled oil. Um, and so there's a lot of times where items will go out of stock because it didn't meet the standards. And as a practicing um, chiropractor, I appreciate that. I want high quality so that I know when I'm putting the oils on my body and in my body that it's going to do what it's supposed to do. So what is an essential oil? Well, hopefully by now you've kind of learned a little bit more about what they are, um, just via you know learning on the internet or through friends. But I'll go through some of the specifics. Uh, the aromatic, okay, so they're an essential oil is the aromatic volatile oil that comes from plants or plant parts such as roots, resins, leaves, flowers, shrubs, and seeds and they come in a lipid form and it's the plant's own medicine cabinet or lifeblood of the plant to help keep it alive and ward off pathogens and their natural predators so they protect the plant. We extract those properties through steam, steam distillation and that is how the properties are retained and the essential oils are 50 to 70 times more potent than dried herbs. They also carry oxygen, and because of their light molecular weight, they don't have to be digested. They can readily be absorbed into our skin and can be absorbed immediately into our circulatory system. So the chemistry of an oil, um, we've, uh, we've discovered that these oils are so, so concentrated. Uh, it takes about 4,000 pounds of Bulgarian roses to make one pound of rose essential oil. And one drop of peppermint oil is equivalent to about 26, 28 cups of peppermint tea. And one drop of lemon essential oil has the health benefit of one pound of lemon. So you can imagine it takes a lot of product to make these oils. And one drop, one tiny molecule um, of essential oil uh, contains, um, and they contain enough molecules that it's 40 million trillion molecules in one drop. So it's a very large number. And then we as humans, our bodies have 100 trillion cells, and that's a lot. But so we find that one drop of that essential oil contains enough molecules to cover every cell in our body 40,000 with 40,000 molecules. That's pretty profound if you think about it. And especially if you know anything about um, cellular um, functioning and receptor site communication between cells. It only takes one molecule to open up that cell to be able to communicate and you know, create its proteins and, you know, basically carry out the cell function to help with ailments and bring energy and vitality health back.
So how do you get those essential oils in? A lot of people are wondering, well, it sounds fabulous, but how do I use these oils? And this is just a nice little um, graphic here showing the many ways that people use the essential oils. And number one is through the feet, for, uh, especially for children. We like to dilute the oils um, into a carrier, and that would be coconut oil or olive oil. And you can rub that on the bottom of the feet with a carrier oil, and they will absorb into the system within two seconds. Um, some people have reported you can take a garlic clove and put it between your toes and within seconds you'll taste it in your mouth. Uh, another way is through the skin. Uh, let's just say for example uh, something, a rash or a burn happened on um, your, your hand. I would directly apply lavender. That's one of the uses I use for the oils. Um, if I burn or cut myself, I'll use lavender right on it. And so they call that using it as a meat oil. Smelling it is a wonderful way. You can just put it in your hands and you can smell it. Um, you can diffuse it with a, all sorts of uh, diffusers that you can purchase. And Young Living Oils gives you opportunity to get one for free in their starter kit. Um, the spine is actually one of my favorite spots to put it when my my two boys are dealing with some um, cold and flu or some you know little infections and pathogens occurring and I want to boost their immune system I will rub it up and down their spine certain oils a lot of people will take a drop under the tongue um, some people like to use frankincense as a preventative there's lots of research showing uh, frankincense has anti-tumoral properties and you can find those on um, PubMed and uh, other essential oils that are used for ailments. And then water is another way to use these essential oils. And then I just want to let people know that these oils are so synergistic with our system that they are within our they go within our body within two hours. They do their they do their thing and they're out. So within two hours, the oils have done their job. And so if you're trying to fight something or you're trying to boost your immune system, um, I would suggest using oils every two to three hours. And with children, you could probably go every three hours just because it's they're not adult size. Okay, so a lot of people um, enjoy getting the starter kit. Um, and I'm not going to actually talk about this I'm going to talk about a couple oils in the kit but when you're getting started with oils like I said this is oils 101 um, buying this kit highly recommend it. it's the best way to go you get the diffuser for free you get these 11 oils you get more samples you get the ninja red packets which is an antioxidant drink and I'll talk about that um, for $150 so it ends up being about 20 cents a drop and it's just it's it's a no-brainer is really what it is to start off with that kit. And then when you want to learn more, you head on to then it's called the Golden Touch Kit. And that's what I'm going to be speaking on mostly for this um, presentation. But just so you know, wholesale costs when you sign up with your first kit, you get it at an $80 value. Retail it's 106 So you save about 25% off the cost. And um, yeah, so this is a really good kit. We call it Oils 102. Okay, let's see where I'm at here, making sure I'm not skipping. Okay, so hospitals have been starting to use the essential oils. They're starting to see the research. Hundreds and hundreds of articles are done on um, of the essential oils and their effects, and they're finding that they have some. Uh, nice antimicrobial properties, which you can find on PubMed, like I stated, um, or my website where I have listed in the resources, or sorry, the research and science on literally hundreds of articles written on the essential oils of properties and how they can be antimicrobial. So here's, here's an example. They took um, air samples from a hospital and measured, you know, 
what different species they had in the air. And then they diffuse with a diffuser, so it puts the oil up into the air for 24 hours. And in this case, they used the seed blend. And what they found is after 24 hours, those spore counts dropped. And then they continued to drop even two weeks after of not diffusing. And so look at those levels. They just continue to drop. And that's just that 24-hour use of the thieves essential oil. So here's our beloved thieves blend. And the reason it's called thieves, uh, for those who may not know, um, it's, it dates back to the ages of the bubonic plera uh, age. And the, there would be grave robbers who would go around and, you know, rob the graves. And they would not catch the plague. And it turned out when they got caught, they were putting cinnamon, clove, rosemary, lemon, and eucalyptus all over their bodies. And it makes sense because these properties show um, that they're antimicrobial. And so that's why it's named thieves. A lot of people, um, they just love the thieves oil. They rub it on the bottom of their feet for daily immune support. They diffuse it, has a 99.96 .96 elimination rate for airborne bacteria. They can gargle in the, in the throat for discomfort. Um, it's very powerful against black molds, and it's a wonderful house cleaner. And it smells very pleasant because it has the clove and the cinnamon and eucalyptus and lemon. So all those smell fabulous. And then some people, they, they like to... Um, use the thieves kind of as their immune booster um, it can, instead of using uh, the flu shot because the flu shot can have some toxic effects on some individuals. So, but again, do not uh, go against your doctor's wishes. This is your educated decision on how you can boost your systems naturally. Okay, so this is where I want to discuss with you the uh, the fun experiments I got to do in um, a lab. So I, I teach uh, nursing and medical assisting students in addition to be a chiropractor. And we had access to the, at the, the school I teach at, we had access to two types of bacteria. And one is E. coli and the other one is Staph aureus. And so for those who are familiar with uh, bacteria and um, just checking on the resistance of um, bacteria, and, or uh, sorry, uh, antibiotics, um, I wanted to test the oils and their ability against the two bacteria that I had access to. And of course, like I've mentioned, these, um, these, have, these experiments have been already actually carried out and you can find them on PubMed. Uh, but I have some fun visuals. So what I did here is I have petri dish and I smeared it with um, E. coli bacteria and then I had a filter paper that I absorbed in the thieves essential oil and then I let it grow overnight and actually these I let grow for three days and what happens is wherever there's the white that's where bacteria has grown and then around here where it's clear, that is where bacteria uh, was resistant. It did not like to grow into that area. And so then you can measure that distance of resistance to the bacteria. So it was neat to see that thieves uh, had some resistance um, for E. coli and even for staph. Um, and so they make all sorts of cleaning products, toothpaste products, hand sanitizers. Um, sprays. I like to use the sprays for going out in public, you know, spraying the toilets and spraying my kids' hands. Um, just when we're out and about to avoid some of the, the uh, germs out there. So in comparison to the, the thieves uh, petri dish, I did have a control of um, so here's again the Staph aureus, and then I had a penicillin uh, disc and a gentamicin disc, 
And so you can see how those antibiotics created resistance to staph. And then you also have the E. coli and the penicillin and gentamicin had some resistance there as well. But I just show that as comparison to antibiotics that are used against bacteria. And I'm excited to share with you there's other great oils later on in this presentation that you definitely want to have on hand during the winter season. Okay, so hand sanitizer, speaking of it, um, not very effective towards long-term killing of bacteria. So here's, um, I just used the the school grade at the, at the school that has the nursing students. And, you know, it was not your standard over-the-counter that you could get. It was a powerful kind. And it didn't do much with the Staph aureus, and it didn't do much with the, hand, the E. coli. Um, now, granted, I know hand sanitizers are only supposed to be effective for a few hours. So I suppose this makes sense that it didn't do well overnight. Um, I also am concerned about how concentrated these, uh, the hand sanitizers are with alcohol. And they're about 60 to 70 percent alcohol in a lot of the hand sanitizers. And they're starting the triclosan, though that's starting to get banned in a lot of the hand sanitizers because it's quite toxic. Um, and then I get concerned um, if I were to let my kids put this on multiple times a day at school. 60% um, of what you put on your skin gets absorbed, and that's pretty concerning when it comes to um, I, the, how much alcohol is getting into my, my kids' blood. So that's concerning. Alright, so moving on. I, so my point is I prefer to use other methods that I know are going to work and are non-toxic. Okay, so moving on. I wanted to talk about lavender. And I don't want to talk a lot on exactly what it does because that gets covered in oils 101. But lavender, I did test in the in the lab, and uh, I, to my surprise, it actually had some resistance. You can see a little bit around um, on the Staph aureus, and then this was a spike lavender that we tested, and you can see a little bit there. And then E. coli, you can also see that it's got some resistance again. And I totally did not expect lavender to have some resistance to the bacteria. Purification is another one that we hear about often. And that's, again, in the Essential Oils 101 kit that you can purchase. And this is what it looked like in the lab. Um, some resistance there. And more with the Staph aureus. And the difference between the E. coli and the staph, for some people who might know more about microbiology, E. coli is a gram-negative bacteria. And that's where more of the superbugs arise. The gram-negative bacteria are tougher to um, kill off, whereas the gram-positive bacteria, um, not too many um, superbugs. However, you're having MRSA, which is methicillin staph resistant aureus. Um, if I said that right, Marcia. Meth resistant staph aureus. Thank you. So that that is a uh, gram positive bacteria that is um, creating superbug issues. Okay, so we went over the oils 101 that um, a few of the oils that are in that kit that have some antimicrobial properties. And now, talking on the Golden Touch Kit, which I mentioned, this is the Oils 102. Um, I'm going to briefly just go through what each of these oils do and show some of their results in the lab. And then at the end, I'm going to show you oils that you can individually purchase that did quite well. And it's, it's quite exciting how well they did. Okay, so let's start with RC. And RC is a blend. Um, that you can see it's the eucalyptus, myrtle, spruce, all sorts of ones. Um, but the, the most popular um, use for RC, it stands for um, <clears throat> respiratory congestion. And a lot of people really like to use it against just the winter uh, issues, bronchitis, just things that have a lot of congestion and mucus. And so it supports the body that way. 
And you can put on the chest, the back, the feet, sinuses, nasal passages, neck, throat. And you can alternate it with Raven, which I'll talk about next for a back fold. So a lot of people use this um, kind of like their Vicks, Robitussin, Dayquil, and Nyquil. In the lab, um, I guess I expected it to actually do more antimicrobial resistance. But thinking about it, it's more for congestion. So it's going to be probably more of your expectorant, um, like your mucinex situation. So yeah, it didn't, it didn't compete well in the lab for um, microbial resistance. That's okay though. It does a wonderful job on congestion. Here's Raven. And Raven is another blend. And it helps um, more for the respiratory for sure. But sometimes we have more of the I guess it's viral, and again, this is not to diagnose, but um, it helps with more of the, the viral uh, output that um, the viral infection can put out. So it boosts your immune system more for the viral infections. And so they just have seen it helping in just areas of this. Again, not diagnosing or curing, it's just helping. And so a lot of people apply that again to the chest, back, and throat. You can use a, a warm, wet compress to help drive the oils deeper. And again, Vix, Rovertosin, Dayquil, and Nyquil. Let's see how Raven did in the lab. Okay. So there's Raven. It actually had some resistance there. I totally did not expect that. And yeah, so it was just fun to test these. Not much for the staph aureus. Okay, the next oil that's in that kit is called Juvaflex. And this one's very beneficial for um, aiding in the liver, for helping to um, let your body detox when it needs to do the detox process. Helps with digestion. Um, some people like this for, uh, I guess, helping to get off addictions and typically if you support the liver it'll do better with getting off the addictions. Um, can help neutralize some allergies. You know you start to get into some emotional components with um, having liver issues. Um, you can actually have more anger issues. So this one will have to apply, apply to the feet, <laughs> feet, spine, and over the liver. And some people like this in relation to uh, these other medications, it kind of it helps like the same way. I did not test the next few ones in the lab as I didn't expect these ones to be very um, antimicrobial. Um, so maybe someday I'll go back and retest these. All right, so Endoflex is the next one. And this one helps with overall balance and support to your endocrine system. And it can help with energy levels, overall vitality. It can support your um, pineal, pituitary glands, parathyroid, thymus, and the adrenal glands. And again, that's, that's that endocrine system. And for some women, they've felt it helps alleviate some hot flash symptoms and helps aid with PMS. And it can stimulate metabolic function and help with weight loss. So some people apply this over the thyroid, kid, uh, kidneys, liver, pancreas, glands, and their feet. And so you can use it a little bit, kind of like a mitol, I guess, where it helps support, um, again, the PMS and some of the uh, hot flashes. Okay, Melrose. And this one helps with tissue regeneration from a damage or injury. And a lot of people like to use this one to help kill or fight fungus. Excellent for cleansing, again, healing wounds, cuts, bruises, scrapes, and insect bites, burns, rashes, earaches, cold sores. It actually does quite a good job in supporting uh, when the cold sores come about. And it'll kind of just cut or calm if you have put it right on that lip. It'll calm um, some of that throbbing pain that you can get with a cold sore. And it also helps with odors and apply when needed. So some of the correlations 
um, how these help. You can use Melrose to also help in the same arena. So I did test Melrose and it did a little bit with some of the E. coli. A little, little bit with the Staph aureus. And again, these, these were actually your three days growth. Okay, so I've gone through that kit, and I know I went through kind of fast, but I have some other um, oils that I want to talk about that had uh, just nice results in the lab in terms of not allowing that bacteria to grow on the Petri dish. So here they are, and some may already know this, but oregano is a very versatile oil that a lot of uh, pathogens just don't like to go near. So you can see practically no bacteria has come around that. And then you also have thyme, which is another herb. Same thing, not much growth. So that was pretty promising when I saw that. And then there was another oil called lemongrass. And lemongrass is a very pleasant smelling very uplifting oil and again not much growth around for the E. coli or the Staph aureus and I must admit this one completely surprised me and when I was doing research on PubMed um, there was quite a few uh, research articles on using lemongrass and diffusing for um, helping some of the superbugs in hospitals and so they're doing that over in Europe and I did post that article on my website on how they diffuse lemongrass for 18 hours straight and it did quite effective in um, rating of some of the superbugs that they were testing. And so Young Living has made the, um, the these oils, the last three oils that I talked about, um, we know how well Thieves does, but they put together oregano, thyme, and lemongrass. So they put kind of a powerhouse of essential oils in capsules and so you can take that um, you know when you're starting to feel not so great and it'll support your immune system and it's just a wonderful option for uh, naturally supporting your immune system they also make one called longevity and that one has thyme and clove and um, a couple other oils but thyme and clove Quite effective um, as we've learned and this is what longevity did in the lab so if you find that you if you want to try different oils or the essential oils are out of stock like a lot of times inner defense will go out of stock because it's a very popular oil you can try longevity and then these are just a couple of other fun oils that I tested so you have Christmas spirit um, that one has cinnamon in it smells pleasant, um, so that one's kind of fun. You can see how it did. Um, there's one called Exodus, and that's a blend of uh, certain oils um, that you can find online uh, or um, youngliving.com will tell you the ingredients for Exodus. So it did better on the staff than it did the E. coli. So, so just, just interesting finds that I had um, came across. Another oil that we had on hand, and we just, you know, again, we were just testing what we had, um, Mountain Savory, not one you hear very often about, but it, again, not much growth, and it did have a little bit of growth for the staff, Aureus, and then we tested Immune Power, and looks like it would be better supporting the immune system versus resistance to bacteria. Here is Frankincense. Um, that one doesn't surprise me. I would see that boosting the immune system versus probably actually rooting of pathogens. And I will say one that did surprise me. I thought lemon would do better um, in the lab, but uh, lemon's properties are actually more as the degreaser. So it's very effective against petrochemicals. And so I would use lemon to definitely use as my cleaning agents to degrease. But I would add other oils to help with the kind of the antimicrobial um, sanitary um, purposes for cleaning my house. 
Okay, and then we have tea tree oil. So this is uh, Malaleuca, and it has a couple properties to it where eh, it did okay, not really good, um, in my opinion, for bacteria. Um, but I do want to go back into the lab and test to see how it would do against yeast, which a lot of people see tea tree oil um, as being effective against yeast and fungus. So that's just to let you guys know what I'm up to. And um, yeah, so some people, you know, this is kind of how they, they keep their immune system boosted and it's just a cute little graphic I came across. And you know, you can put these oils, you know, diffuse them, put them on your feet, um, you know, wipe your counter surfaces. And yeah, it was. It'll probably help boost the immune system and create some uh, sanitary areas where then hopefully you don't catch the bugs so easily. So yeah, um, I'm just gonna kind of go through some uh, quick visuals on what people like to do. And you can find these all online. You know, people uh, add oils to their apple cider vinegar to help with their sore throat. They have oils to help with wet coughs, dry coughs, you can make your own vapor rub. And I've put a lot of these recipes on the DrFaithEssentials.com so that you can make your own. You know, you can make your own wellness blend, makes sense, it has the thieves, oregano in there. Um, I would add lemongrass, I would add thyme. Um, you, you can really do one oil you can do many you just it's you kind of have fun with it and see what what you do best with some people have even gone as far as making their own little lozenges so they do with thieves oil with honey that one's kind of fun and there's some with just taking actual honey and putting the drops of oil in there and getting the oils in your body that way now there's Helping with allergy relief, which does happen during the winter season um, between the molds and the, the dry dryness and the, the dust that can come about. So yeah, I just I just wanted to give you guys a nice overview of some oils to use for the cold and flu season um, or winter season. And um, for those who are not familiar with how to get started, I do have that link on my website at Dr. Face Essentials. And you can go and learn on the premium starter kit. That's the initial one that everybody starts with because in order to get your discounts, you have to have a starter kit of some sort. And then after you get your starter kit, you then are able to buy um, whatever oils you want at your discount. And so you can buy that golden touch kit then as your next one or you can purchase individual oils that I spoke about um, and then I would just continue learning what you can learn on the different presentations I'll be posting on the website. I also want to just give you a heads up really learn those essential rewards how those can benefit you and there's a page to describe it all because uh, I want you guys to earn free product. That is how I get a lot of my free product by doing the essential rewards with um, Young Living after I had signed up. And it's, I call it my no brainer. So I think that's going to be a wrap here. And if you guys have any questions, email me. I hope you learned. And uh, I always get excited when I can have visual on how well these oils do. So thank you and here's to your health and good luck with those oils.